In this episode, the final part of our five-part series on how to develop a CSR program, we actually go, we actually discuss the pitch phase, and we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to the Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals learn strategies and tactics to develop and grow their goodness in CSR program. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to get the latest strategies and tactics, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you're up to date. Now, now I'm joined by Nicole Campbell, CSR expert, and we're going to talk about the the fifth part of our five-part series on developing a CSR program, which is the pitch phase. Now, I'm assuming, Nicole, for the pitch phase, you're pitching everything that you've learned from part one all the way to part four, have your, your advocates in line, you've got your um, data to back you up. What entails the final phase? And I would imagine this is one of the most important parts because now you're pitching to probably executives or leadership in your company, right? Yeah, so hopefully by this point, though, you've done all of your homework, you've made the relationships that you need to have made, and now you're just kind of putting it on paper and trying to be really concise in your ask. And that is, for me, that that's the hardest part. You know, sometimes you want to do these huge slide decks, but often when you're presenting to leaders um, about something like social impact that isn't one of their right now key business priorities probably not going to get a lot of time to do it so you need to be concise you need to be punchy and you need to be super impactful and that's what we're going to be talking about today so um i like to break it down into four steps everything is about steps with us um just to kind of like frame your thinking so the first step is uh to frame it and we talked about that articulation phase um, before, but essentially really articulating the business need um, and then presenting the opportunity that exists. So as an example, if you're presenting to that adverse leader that we talked about um, in video, I think three it was, uh, you might start with the state of the world. So for instance, there is an erosion of trust in the world right now and consumers and employees have expectations on their um, their employers to make this change. And this is one of the ways that we can do this through these programs, or this is the benefit that you'll see. That sort of like high line headline that's going to frame this whole conversation and what it means to them. The second is to support your case. And so this is the back it up phase. And this is where you can say, you know, in addition to what's happening into the world, this, these are what our competitors are doing. This is what's happening. This is the external benchmarking. This is how much people are spending. This is a best in class program. And this is how we compare. This is the, so you can like highlight the opportunities that exist from the actual CSR perspective. Then you move into how you're gonna do it. We talked about in another video, the phases of change, which is logic, emotion, and then ease. The ease is showing them, we can do this. Keeping it high level, remembering that you're presenting to executives, you don't wanna get into the nitty gritty where they're looking on the screen, um, trying to decipher these details that you shouldn't even be presenting at a meeting like this. But high level action plan, um, this is what it's going to take money-wise. This is when it's going to be done. These are the steps that, it'll in, that will um, need to take place. And then following with um, proposing your next steps. So what is the immediate next steps and what is the call up to action for those leaders? Sometimes they don't really know um, what their role is. So be really clear with that ask. Say, um, we're looking for an approval, we're looking for budget, we're looking for support, um, and be ready. Be ready that they might say no. And if they do say no, in your back pocket, think about um, a, a pivot that you might make. So maybe you can test whatever you're trying to do on a certain region to demonstrate the value of whatever you're specifically proposing for your CSR program, but have that sort of backup plan in mind if they do say no at that point. The other thing I should say too, um, less is more. Uh, sometimes if you have too much information, it can get people going down a rabbit hole. And when you only have say 30 minutes, maybe 45 to present this, um, you don't want that conversation to digress. 
keep your slides to a minimum. I mean, if you can do this in five or six slides, you're going to be laughing. Um, anticipate objections. So go in there with everything that you could ever imagine them um, anticipating. So for instance, uh, really knowing what your budget projections would be like to implement something like this. Um, understanding the data that supports this case even more than you have on the screen. Just like that goes to the research, like know your stuff. Never introduce more information that is on those slides and make sure you always send the deck as a pre-read so people can go through it and you can have a better conversation. So PDF that, give it um, to them a weekend of notice or find out what their preference is. And then um, I must reiterate to have a clear ask. Sometimes you do this amazing presentation and everyone's applauding and then they say, okay, so what do you want from us? And then you look out. Ugh, I didn't even think that I'd get that far. I, I don't have my ask. So make sure you know exactly what it is that you're asking. And um, I wish you luck. It's it's very exciting. Once you're at this point, it's like you're you're almost there. Like in your experience, when you've done these pitches and presentations, do you normally get a positive and hey, let's move forward, or do you do you always do you sometimes get the um, maybe we need more information. Like if you've done your research, if you've done every single phase correctly, what is the more likely outcome? It, or is it, that too difficult to answer? No, that's a great question. So I've seen people go in or I've heard of people going in and pitching something without bringing people along the journey. It's all about the advocacy and the uh -huh. research and that constant conversation throughout that's going to make you successful because by the time you actually make this presentation, most people should already have all, um, you know, you, you would already have a gut feel on where people stand. Um, it might just be about, you know, how much money they want to give you to do this. Like those are the conversations that might happen in the, in the meeting. But if you do it, if you do the approach that we've shared, there should be no surprises. Um, and if you, in the earlier phases, the earliest steps, start having these conversations and you can sense there's apprehension, you should be solving for that way before you start pitching. And you might you might not be able to do that alone. You might need to um, find an, an advocate or a sponsor to help fight this case for you. That's at a more senior level. But at that point, that's when you should figure those things out. You know, when, I, um, when I've been pitching big programs and projects and marketing and so on, I always, lead it in with, I'd like to try this pilot program because yeah. the moment I include the word pilot, it, it, especially for maybe when you're talking about the risk adverse person, that kind of decreases the risk. Cause like, Oh, it's only a pilot, but is there a danger that people won't be taking your program seriously if you pitch it just as a pilot? Yeah. So I say, um, don't, don't start with the pilot, unless you sense apprehension, then default to the pilot. And I think the other reason too, is when you're only getting in a meeting with these folks once a quarter, it's just going to slow you down. So I say have the pilot as a backup, or if you're feeling apprehension in the earlier conversations, then pitch it as a pilot, but it's harder to, it's harder to take leaps and bounds from a pilot versus scaling back from the initial pitch to a pilot. Got it, got it, got it. And remember, if you're getting value from this video, make sure to hit the like button. And the question of the day I have for you is, um, have you ever pitched in front of executives and leaderships to get your CSR program uh, going? And how did it go? Let us know in the comment section below. So Nicole, do you have anything else to add in terms of the pitch section of developing a CSR program? Yeah, one thing that I think is often or sometimes overlooked is really thinking about the timing of your pitch. Make sure that you understand what's going on in the business so you are you are not um, white noise. As an example, if you have a merger or acquisition that's happening and your leaders are so focused on something like that or big layoffs that are happening or something that's happening with the business that you might not know about, they might not be able to listen the same way. Um, it, as they would if you waited for the right timing. So make sure you do that in front of your research step as well. If you want to learn all the phases of starting a CSR program, you got to check out this playlist here, as well as this playlist on other strategies and tactics on developing and growing your goodness in CSR program. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in our next episode.